Hey, Internet world, it's me, Naisha. <sighs> I did not make it to the three videos a week for January, but I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been kind of tough for me lately, so I'm trying to be ginger with myself. So I'm back, and today we're going to do a story time. I think I have the perfect story time for you guys. I've never, well actually I have talked, I've never talked with you guys about this, but I've written about it. And so basically today's story time is going to be about that time when I lived in a commune. Yes, I lived in an urban commune for about five or so months when I was in college in Bushwick, Brooklyn. So if you want to hear all about the shenanigans that ensued during that part of my life, please stay tuned. So the name of the commune that I lived in was called Surreal Estate. And I lived there for about five months in college. And um, it was a crazy five months. I have a lot of mixed feelings when I think back on it. Like sometimes I think back on it and think like, oh God, I can't believe I did that. And then sometimes I'm like, oh God, that was so much fun. I wish I had more fun. But anyways, so how I found out about this place was through a woman that I used to work with. I worked with this young woman. We're gonna call her Jane. I worked with Jane on this campaign in like 2009, I believe, for a summer, we were trying to we were trying to get collect signatures for a reinvestigation of September 11th. So we were like running around like different parks and Union Square and different places, trying to collect enough signatures to get this or whatever. And I remember I was living out in Woodhaven. I had just like I had like no money, and for some strange reason, I decided to stay in New York. Well, I know why I decided to stay stay in New York that summer. But um, I stay, I chose, made the decision to stay in New York and I had like no money. So I was living in Woodhaven. I was like renting like um, out. I was literally renting out someone's living room, like a couch on their living, like in their living room. And it was like so far the people were weird. Like it was just such a horrible time in my life. And I was renting it out for the summer and, you know, then... It came time for me to find something better and something else. So I was looking around or whatever, and this was like July, August, and I remember she told me that she was living in this like creative collective, this artistic space in Brooklyn, and I was like, my ears kind of like, you know, went up because I was like, oh, that sounds so cool, and you know, I really, at that time, was really interested in like communal living and shared spaces because I thought it would be fun and I had lived in a similar situation in uh, Berkeley California I lived at this queer collective called Oscar Wilde but Oscar Wilde was completely different but anyway she told me about this place and I really didn't think much of it at first um, she told me like they had like a roach problem <laughs> And I don't know if she told me about some of the other problems that they had, but she told me they had a roach problem. And I was like, uh, I ain't really down with that. So I was like still looking, you know, here and there. But like, you know, if you're a broke college student, the, the pickings be slim. The pickings be real, real slim. And so finally, like I ended up like seeing an ad on Craigslist for this the place and I was like oh this must be you know what such and such was talking about and then from there I think I emailed them and I was like oh I heard about this place from Jane she's a current member or you know a housemate she had a, not, a lot of nice great things to say and then um, they told me about the process the process was supposed to be I was supposed to come there um, meet people go through a go through like a a council of some sorts where I was supposed to meet all of them and then they were supposed to like deliberate together on whether or not I should be allowed in 
to the space, like what I could contribute and things like that. I actually didn't even end up doing any of that. Like I, the girl who was trying to sublet her spot or get rid of her spot, we're going to call her Sarah. <laughs> I'm just making up these names off the top of my head. Like I remember the real people's names, but Sarah was like, she was like one of the more founding members or whatever. And then she was going off someplace to do something. And she just like showed me around one day and it was like, how do I describe the, the place? It was kind of like you go up, was it, I don't know, I don't want to say it was like a, it was like a converted loft area. So, or like in like two parts of it or like converted and like connected. And it was like three, two or three, no, three floors, the basement level, the middle, the regular level. And then there was like another level, I believe. So it was three floors and um, most of the rooms were shared. So it was a lot of people coming in for shared roommate situations. And I was in college, so I was used to sharing a room you know it is what it is and she showed me around and it was kind of dirty <laughs> and she said oh my gosh we have like a cleaning schedule and da, 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 and some people aren't adhering to it and uh, it'll be clean by the time you come here so I was like okay whatever like this is what they say it is whatever and so then like I think I went back again to meet the founder of the place. We're gonna call him Jay. So Jay, I went like back and I think I thought I was supposed to be doing the council, but there was none that night. And basically like he was just like, yeah, you can move in, you have the money or whatever. <laughs> like basically, that's basically like what happened. Like. There was no counselor, no nothing. And since he was like the founding guy, so he could just do whatever he wanted to do. You know, and I, I kind of understand that. It is what it is. So I ended up moving in in late August. And from there, <laughs> it was just wild, man. Like, I moved in and... I get, I get there with my stuff and the girl is like gone or whatever. I'm like, okay, whatever. There's another girl in the room. I don't even remember any of this. There's another girl in the room, but basically like I come in and then it's like this guy in the room or whatever. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be taking over this room at whatever time or whatever. And he's like, oh, I thought you were coming a few days later or whatever. Like next week, I was like, oh no, I'm here today. Like it was supposed to be from today till whatever. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm trying to do. And, you know, do you think, like, you could sleep on the roof for a few nights? And I was like, what? Like, it was still August, but I'm like, hold up, 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 hold up. I did not spend money to sleep on nobody's roof. I'm not sleeping on nobody's roof. That's dangerous, like, sleep on the roof. I was like, uh, no, I can't do that. Um, we gonna have to figure this space out. So basically, like, I put my stuff down. And I kind of was like, you need to leave. I don't know. Like, I was like, you need to leave or whatever. And it was kind of like a hoopla. And, like, I kind of put my stuff down and, like, made, like, a pallet on the floor. Because I don't think that this place had, like, a... That room had, like, a bed at the time. This is sounding crazier and crazier the more I speak. And I met people or whatever. I went around, met different people, and I saw people that were that looked like they were like doing creative stuff. <laughs> like, there was this guy that was like drawing in the, in the, in the living room. And I was like, oh, okay. And you know, you meet people and then like, um, that same night, I think, like, I did finally meet some people. They were having some type of house council-ish thing. 
But it turns out they were having this about people, like people that were attending weren't even like mem- members of the house. And they were arguing basically for like, I think in my mind, or as if I recall, right, they were kind of arguing for like the right to squat or like not be kicked out or something. And I was just like, oh no, what did I get myself into? Okay. So I think like that night or the next night, I want to say it was the first night. I'm like, okay, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. And I think I went to sleep kind of early. It might have been the second night, but I think I went to No, I feel like it was the first night. Anyways, that night or the second night, I can't remember. I went to sleep really early. So I go to sleep early or wherever, and then all of a sudden I wake up, like, just out of my sleep because I kind of hear something. And it is... I wake up and it's like this guy is like kind of like sitting near me like packing or like going through some boxes or something and I'm like what are you doing in here cuz I lock the door from the inside oh boy walked around the roof climbed in through the window and I was just livid I was just like what is this no you have to go get out (laughs) like what is this like i'm not leaving like i was just like what is this like you go sleep on the roof like i'm not sleeping on no roof or whatever like and it was supposed to be like two people to a room and i i was just like "Uh uh-uh so then i think i go back to sleep right and then i wake up again and i hear like this commotion and then like I kind of like I'm listening and no lie there is a a female body person that is outside the door talking with a bunch of other people who is accusing another person of rape so at this point I'm really like what did I get into so I get on the phone with my friend. <laughs> well, I call my friend Tim and I'm like, oh my God. Like, there's like someone got raped here and oh my goodness. Like, I don't know if I can deal with this. Like this, this, this mess is like off the hook already. So I think I kind of go out there and it's no problem for me to really be out there because like, I think they're trying to have some type of counsel about this and it's really divided. Like, some people are like, we need to call the police. We don't know what we're doing. Some other people are like, the police are bad. We need to handle this on our own. We need to handle this in-house. We don't call them pigs over here. But the thing is, when you have a situation like that, nothing is ever going to be good enough. You know what I'm saying? I think the, the female body person wanted the person kicked out of the house. But the shade is this person, this female body person that we're going to call Yuck Mouth. <laughs> I'm just making up so many stupid names. Yuck Mouth <laughs> wanted this other dude that um, I'm just going to, that they allege raped them to move out the house, but Yuck Mouth didn't live there. And the other dude, Simon, lived there. So Yuck Mouth didn't live there and Simon lived there, right? So that's also the divide. People were like, how you gonna come in here and talk about this person needs to um, move out of the house and you don't even live here? And also there was the issue of what really happened because Simon says that the sex was consensual. Yuck Mouth says that it wasn't because Yuck Mouth doesn't remember. Yuck Mouth woke up and was like, what happened? It's like, oh, nothing. We had sex. Da, 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 da. Or, and Simon was like, we had sex. Da, da, da. And then Yuck Mouth was like, I don't remember. Da, 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 da. That's rape. I'm not going to get into what rape is or is not. You know, I'm not going to get into, you know, what, what it is and what, what it is not. But that was... um. A very interesting situation some people were like should we give them give him some zines to read so, kind of got into the house or whatever but the thing is that 
it had some issues structurally. There were roaches. It was not the cleanest place. And it had bed bugs. But I was so young and naive at that point. I didn't even know what a bed bug was. Like, a bed bug to me... I feel like there was a point in, like, everyone's lives in, like, the U.S. when bed bugs weren't a thing. Like, a bed bug to me was, like, something that my grandmother said to me when I was a kid. Like, sweet type, don't let the bed bugs bite. Like, I thought, like, oh, it's a, be- it's a bug on the bed. Like, smash it and then, like, it'll go away. Like, like no, it had, like, an infest. I didn't know it, it was, like, an infestation thing. It had, like, there was, like, this big infestation of them. They were in the woods. They were everywhere, like in every part of this house and they had just spread all over so like every floor had a bed bug infestation and it was just crazy and the thing was it was like okay well how do we get rid of this so it was hard to it was hard to get rid of because they were on every floor of the um the house so it was hard to really how do you get rid of that? It's really expensive. And then there was a lot of turmoil and disagreements amongst the members as to how we were going to get rid of these bed bugs because some people wanted to do, like, we need to get chemicals or whatever, you know, and, you know, kill them. And some people were like, can't do that. Chemicals are harmful to us. And bed bugs have feelings and we can't go around killing like a living creature. And then they kind of decided, sometimes they decided to like heat, like heat the house. So you can do things like you can freeze them out. You can like burn them out with like heaters, but it was like twofold. They couldn't figure out what they were going to do in general about them. And then they couldn't figure out how to do it, um, in, in a way that was financially feasible. So it was just off the hook as far as the bed bugs and they would bite you and they would be everywhere and it was just nasty and disgusting. And yeah, <laughs> the bed bugs. Okay, so I think that's enough for now. Let me know if you wanna hear part two and part three of my life in an urban commune. I will talk to you soon. Bye.